And here we go. I am pumped up for this conversation, folks. Come on now. No, but this is going to be a good one because my friend Aaron and I have spent quite a lot of time this year together, speaking at events together. Um, and I've been learning a lot about how she operates because my natural tendency, as you'll see, is not the same as her natural tendency. My natural tendency is just freaking pedal to the metal, make it happen. And she literally, okay, I'm gonna tell you a quick story here. We were speaking at an event together and she literally makes me pull tarot cards and I get like a fairy tarot card. I don't really know what this means. I still can't pronounce it correctly. And it literally impacted a major decision in my life and my business. And it was, it was unbelievable. I was putting droplets under my tongue for abundance. Look, here's the truth. To me, this stuff is fairly new. And so I really wanted to bring her on the show to talk to you about energetics of business, the excitement, how to understand, how to heal yourself, to grow a thriving business. And we'll tell more stories as we go through today. But let me give you a little bit of like an, a real bio rather than just like this Jake rambling excitement bio. And here it is. Erin Nicole Porter is an energetics business coach, master practitioner and trainer of NLP and hypnosis, breathwork facilitator, somatic experiencing practitioner in training, adult attachment repair model therapist, and host of the Energetics of Business podcast. She enjoys coaching women in her board certified coaching certification, the quantum ripple effect, how to heal internally so their businesses can thrive, align business strategies in the energetic of business. She is also the author of Burnout to Breakthrough and the Breakthrough Oracle deck. Erin, welcome to the show. Jake, I'm so excited. I feel like I should just have you next to me <laughs> all the time. Just give me, you're such like a hype. You have such of that energy. Like you said, our energies are so different. And I always love that. Cause I'm like, yes, let's go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's go. And, and so look, I, I want to start, I want to start here. Okay. Because as I mentioned, kind of bringing you in, we do have unique different styles, but at the end of the day, we need a little bit of both, right? Totally. We need to have both. And so talk to me about when did you realize that the energetics of business was so important to you and also explain to us like at a high level what is energetics of business and how can we interpret it moving forward through this episode yeah uh, great question so i really discovered the energetics of business and basically all the inner workings of business when i was just burnt out on strategy i was chasing strategy after strategy after strategy funnel ads, you name it. And I just was crashing and burning. Like, you know, I'd have some success, some things would start to move. And then I kept thinking another strategy was going to solve a lot of my problems and business. It, it didn't, um, you know, obviously it's helpful and we need it. We need the tactical pieces. Like I love to jam out on strategy, but I was just burnt out looking for that what I realized there was a lot of the internal pieces that are holding us back. And so when I, when I think of the energetics of business and how I describe it, when I'm working with people is it's of course the mindset where, you know, beat upside the head with like how your mindset impacts your business. That's one layer of it. There's also two, how I kind of group it in is um, trauma and how that impacts your business too. Cause for a lot of us, our businesses are great ways to get our needs met that we didn't maybe get met as like as children. Children. So that's one avenue of it. And then also the spiritual component. So like feeling into the energy and holding whatever it is that you want to hold and feeling safety and all of that. So I really look at it kind of from all three of those perspectives, both somatic, so your body and your subconscious and how all of what's happening inside of you is projecting out in that mirror that's happening inside of your business and you. Whew. Sheesh, come on, we're getting started over here. Now, I want everyone who's listening to, to understand this. Some of this stuff, you know, if you're like me, is gonna be fairly new to you in terms of, you know, what does this all mean? And some of this stuff, it's really important to dig deeper. But if you're trying to write a book or you have a book, a lot of this is really, really relevant. Whether you have a book and you're using it to grow your business, or you're just trying to come up and say, you know, who am I to write this book, right? We need to understand the mindset of it. And you, you mentioned something about burnout, right? Let's start here because burnout's a, a, a word. It's, it's part of your title of your book. It's something that a lot of us, you know, use as everyday language. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have experienced it. A lot of people don't even know they experienced it. And a lot of people sometimes even make up that they're burnt out, right? What really are the signs of burnout and what should we be thinking about when we recognize those signs? 
Yeah. So how I like to look at burnout, because I think you made a really good point of sometimes people think that they're burnt out when it's actually other things that are happening. And for me, I'm looking at somebody's like nervous system and how it's regulated or dysregulated. So when we're dysregulated in our nervous systems, we're experiencing a lot of the common fight, flight, freeze, spawn, those symptoms. So for some people, burnout is going to show up and you're going to go into the trauma response of, I need to work more and work more and work more. And you might just be really dissociated from the here and now from like the present moment, because you're just up in your mind, like, okay, if I can just like, you know, work my way out of this and maybe I won't feel the burnout that I'm going to feel because once I get there, once I get more money, once I get the next thing, once I get the, you know, whatever it might be, then everything will feel okay. For some people, they go very freeze in their system where it's like, I can't do anything. Like I'm so overwhelmed. I'm overcooked. I'm done. And I'm just kind of frozen. Some people, when they're burnt out, they go more into fawn. So they go more into like people pleasing, very codependent, uh, needing to make everybody happy. And then also some people run more of that fight response where it's like, I got to kind of like bring aggression to what I'm, what I'm doing. And so in kind of that side of it, based on whatever response you're running is what you're going to see and feel in your body. Like for me, I had chronic fatigue. I had adrenal fatigue. I literally had no energy, but I kept overdriving my system. So I would just go and go and go and go and go. And I had my, I'm fine face on. I'm like, everything's great. Everything's awesome. I love what I do. I love what I do. And what I want people to realize is like, you can love what you do and you're still going to maybe experience some burnout sometimes. And you have to kind of know also too, this kind of speaks to your other point that you brought, brought through of what season that you're in. Like for me, I know that like, let's say these last eight weeks, really with like traveling and everything that's been going on, I've been more in a go season. And even though that's healthy stress and exciting stress, I have to kind of watch my body because I'll, you know, run myself down. It's just a pattern that I've ran for, you know, all 31 years of my life. And so I have to watch that, but I also have to know, okay, this isn't a burnout sign. This is just, we're in a go season and that's part of business. And sometimes you're in more of a, okay, I need to come in. I need to refine what's happening inside of my system so I can come out. So really to answer your question, burnout can look really different for everybody. Dissociation, brain fog, fatigue, um, overwhelm, freeze, not doing anything, feeling almost paralyzed. Like it's a range really. And, and look, as you're talking about this, I mean, it, it, it makes a lot of sense, but the thing that I go to is, well, how do we, how do we get to the root of it and actually know if it's what the issue is, right? Because you're mentioning chronic fatigue or adrenal fatigue, and that's kind of, those were your signs, mm -hmm. but how can, how can somebody know that? So they're not just making up an issue and saying, oh, that's burnout, right? How do we get to the root of understanding like, why is this happening? Or is this related to our energy? Is this related to our childhood? Like, how does it all come together? Because, you know, people can have chronic fatigue and not have no idea why it's happening. Mm -hmm. And it can be directly correlated to something else that maybe someone wouldn't initially recognize. Maybe you're not going to find that on WebMD, you know, like, like, so how do you get to the root of this? If you notice some of these signs coming up and, and really, how do you notice if, it's burnout or the season you're in, right? Because like you mentioned, some people would associate burnout with what you associate as a go season. Mm -hmm. So just, I know I asked like 17 questions in, in that single, single phrase right there, but take this however you want to go because whatever you're going to say is going to be great. Yeah, uh, really, it's, it depends per person, which isn't like, you know, everybody wants like a one size fits all answer. And I don't have that for this because it's going to look so differently for everybody. And like, for me, I know, I know, because I'm, I bring a lot of self awareness, I have burned out so much in the past, I can tell now from kind of understanding my body and working in my body, when something is coming from more of like a burnout, or when it's just a go season. So the first thing is self awareness is key, you have to kind of start to just see honestly, and then go, oh, okay. When I push too hard this way, and then I feel all of these symptoms and all of this, um, dysregulation afterwards, that's a cue for me. That's maybe it's burnout or, you know, again, let's say you're in more of a go season and you're just like, I got a lot going on and it's exciting and you don't feel that extreme low. You're kind of like, okay, I'm just, I'm a little exhausted because there's a lot going on. You kind of have to see like where you almost are on this like roller coaster 
scale. So if you, if you go extreme high and extreme low, there's probably some dysregulation in there. We're, we're entrepreneurs. We're going to have that common or, you know, that we all do that kind of roller coaster that we ride, but it should feel kind of like, okay, there's some ups and some downs, not like, you know, the big roller coaster where you go all the way up and all of a sudden you drop all the way down. That's usually a sign. And for me, I always try to take a step back. And again, it comes to having self-awareness and just learning as you go versus like, oh, I need to figure out if this is burnout or, oh, I need to figure out if it's this take a step back and say, okay, where am I operating from? Am I over pushing myself and trying to do more and achieve more? Because I think that once I get that, something's going to happen in my life and I'm going to feel safe and I'm going to feel worthy and I'm not going to feel this imposter syndrome and I'm going to feel enough. Or is it coming from true alignment of, I want to move into this. I am, you know, stepping into this next level. It's exciting. So I'm always just kind of watching where am I moving from? And is it extreme high and lows? Or is it the natural flows of life that happen? That's so good. That's so good. And it, it reminded me of something that you said in a keynote of, of yours where, and, and I'm going to paraphrase it. And then I want you to kind of elaborate in case I mess it up. But you, you talk about where am I operating from, right? And talk about kind of feeling it and being self-aware. And one of the things that you mentioned when I was listening to you speak was people often think to feel rather than feel the feel, right? Mm -hmm. So can you, can you elaborate how we can, as we're going through this, as we're becoming more aware of what's going on and tuning in and checking in with ourselves, talk to me about the difference of thinking to feel versus feeling to feel. Yeah, I love this. So for me, I didn't realize probably until a couple of years ago that I had a body, <laughs> like in, you know, in the concept of everything, I was like, yeah, I have a body. But what I realized was I live so much in my mind. I couldn't really, I could, you know, maybe feel some sensations and things like that, but what I would do is I would report about how, how I was feeling. So if I told you right now in this moment, like, oh, you know, if I'm feeling a little like nervous or overwhelmed, I could just like talk about it. I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm overwhelmed. I'm all of these things. But I had this beautiful protection strategy of I'm not going to actually feel those things because if I have to sit and feel them for a moment, it means I'd actually have to slow down and get out of my head and actually feel what's happening in here. So thinking about how to feel better is what we do a lot of times with our mind. We're trying to like think a better thought or think about how we're feeling or we're, we're reporting about the weather. This is a metaphor from my mentor. He's like, it's the difference between reporting about the weather and be like, oh, it's sunny outside. It's this, it's this, it's this versus the weather person that's outside and they're in it and they're speaking from the like emotional body. They're speaking from actually what they're feeling two different things. For me, I couldn't really speak from the body for a lot of the, the times because it there was a lot of pain in there. There's a lot of disappointment. And it was just easier to kind of stay up in this place because I didn't have that safety. So reporting about it versus actually truly feeling your feels and feeling your emotions and then expressing from that place. Who do you think from the entrepreneurial side of things, who do you think needs to be aware of this? Right? Like, who do you think knows this and who do you think needs it? Because this thing, while as you describe it and you give the weather analogy, I'm like, makes sense. But, and you mentioned a couple of years ago, you didn't even realize you had that, the, the body, right? But how do we even know if we don't know, right? Like, where do we become open to that? How do mm -hmm. we understand like what it is? Because once we understand what is, we can become that we can learn that we can experience that so how do we as entrepreneurs recognize what it is that you're talking about and become aware of that yeah so really simple practice that everybody can do is set a timer on your phone for like once an hour or five times a day or however many that you want to do and just have it say like what am i feeling in this moment close your eyes take a few deep breaths and actually pause in your life because we're very go, go, go. We got a lot of things going on and just see if you can feel any sensations and start there. It's super simple and you can just check in and then you can ask yourself once you kind of built that up, where am I moving from? Anytime that I go to post, anytime that I get ready to do a training, anytime that I get ready to literally do anything in my life, I take a pause, I drop in and I say, where am I moving from? Am I creating this post because I'm afraid and I need to get a client and I'm, you know, feeling this way? 
Or am I dropped in and am I coming from presence? Am I coming from abundance? Am I coming from openness and moving there? That way we don't keep like recreating those patterns in our life on the external. So just pause, literally just pause, take a couple breaths and just notice what's here with you in the here and now. And that's a game changer. That's a, that's a great exercise for, for everyone to try. And I mean, as you're talking about that, I think of like, my life and my business. And I, and I think of, you know, where am I pausing? When am I pausing? What happens when I do pause versus when I just jump into the next thing? And I've noticed for me that when I can take that pause or when I can channel that presence, right? Of like, okay, I'm here. This is exciting. I tend to perform at a higher level. Mm-hmm. I tend to have better energy transfer between me and the prospect or me and my clients or, or me and our, our podcast guest. You know, an example literally from today that I could think about is I got out of the shower today. I was getting ready to put my, my clothes on and I literally did like a hop, skip and a jump because I was like, woohoo! Like, like I was like getting excited about today because I, I have such a great thing on my calendar. And I was like, I'm feeling it, right? Like that was an example to me of what you're describing of checking in, I was fully in the present. I was excited about it. And that like allowed me to show up better right after. Is that kind of what you're describing? Like how to like kind of check in or, or recognize the moment before you actually do the thing that you know you have to do? Totally. Literally just check in with yourself. Yeah. How am I feeling? What am I feeling in this moment? And if you're not like, let's say you're going to make a post. I'm just going to use social media here, for example, or you're going to write a chapter in, in your book and you're coming from like, oh my gosh, I got to write this thing for my book. And there's this pressure and who am I to do this? And, you know, I, I'm giving hand references here for everyone that's listening of uh, this almost like constricted energy. You can almost feel it when I talk about it. Imagine trying to write your book from this contraction of like, fuck, I got to do this thing. And it's not good enough. And I'm not good enough. And are people going to want to read this? Imagine then like what you put out into the universe or into the ethers, probably a lot of that, that same energy versus if I drop in, I presence, I'm like, oh, okay, actually I'm feeling some imposter syndrome. I'm not feeling good enough. Can I actually work with those parts of me and let them know I hear them and that I see them and just take a moment to presence what's coming up for me versus going into that overdrive and trying to push past everything and keep going. Then you're moving from a different place because all of the, the parts that hang out with us, all of these little pieces of us that have have been with us for years and years once they quiet down then we can breathe again and then we can move from that place mm. how much do you think is you know environment how, how much does environment have to play with the ability to check in with yourself the ability to execute at a higher level the ability to be present how much emphasis do you put on environment and space like my actual physical environment around me yeah Honestly, it's just not in my system to really think too much about that. Like I see more of my environment as my body because I can be in a chaos, like, you know, I could be in a coffee shop or whatever. And I can, if I can find my environment, which is me and my system, that makes a difference, you know, for me, but for some people, and uh, I don't know how much like you're into like the human design world and all of that's not my expertise, but there's actually things based in your human design chart of like how you operate in different environments. For me, like one of my best places to write, for example, is in a coffee shop where there's sound and there's people happening. I'm a projector, so I don't have that sacral energy. So it's like, even if I hang out with you, you have a sacral and you have a lot of energy. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, excitement, you know, let's go. And then that gets me excited and I can kind of use some of that to help fuel me. So for somebody else, it might be completely different where they need peace. They need quiet. They need, you know, their room to be set up a certain way. It's, it's hard because everyone kind of acts different based on their design too. Right. Right. Okay. You, you mentioned, you mentioned like energy, right? Mm -hmm. You're the queen of energetics of business. Let's, let's talk about this. How, and I want to get deep, like this back half of this interview is about to get deep. We're about to dig into trauma energy. We're going to get really into it here. The, the aspect of energy, how, how does that play? How can we, how do we receive it? How do we feel our energy? How do we channel other people's energy into ourselves? Like, like 
what do we need to know about energy that can allow us to be a better writer, that can allow us to be more present, that can allow us to grow the business, that can allow us to not get burnt out from the tactics? Mm -hmm. what, what do, talk to us about the different ways to receive and give and share energy. Yeah, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of share two pieces of this. The first one is going to be less fun and sexy because it's going to be more of like the deeper, not so fun work. It's going to be more of you got to kind of work where your trauma impacts your business. Because it, it, again, it, if you're kind of always coming from that trauma response or coming from your wounded inner child and you're trying to operate that way in business, you very much usually come from a constriction or you come from this contraction and then you're trying to run a launch, you're trying to run a, uh, you know, write your book. You're trying to do all of these different things from that place. And then it's just, there's a lot of pressure. You know, there's the pressure to prove yourself, to perform, to achieve, to get all these things done. So your energy can feel very constricted and contracted when you're operating from that place. Here's the thing though, with that is that sometimes it does work. Like, I mean, for me, I, you know, was able to grow to, I'd say like my first six figures, multiple six figures in, in that response, because I just, I went in more overdrive mode. So I was just like, let me go and go and go and go and go. It's not sustainable long-term. So from that energy, I had to kind of almost clear out all of the cobwebs. So then I could actually receive what I wanted and I could feel safe in it staying and keeping and recreating. So so one, real quick, real quick. Yeah. Does everybody... You know, you say come from a place of, of healing that inner child, that, that trauma. Does everybody have some layer of trauma that impacts their business? Yes, everybody does. We all have trauma, whether it's big trauma, little trauma, like we all have it subconsciously for some of us just more than others, based on what your childhood was like, based on just your lived experiences, all of those different things impact it, whether it's more subtle or whether it's more um, kind of active, just kind of depends upon what you grew up with and what's kind of happening in business. Okay, but, but how do we know, right? If you're not aware of that trauma, mm -hmm. right? And you maybe haven't stepped into a lot of the inner work stuff yet, or you're just getting introduced to it. Like maybe you know you have trauma, maybe you don't realize that the trauma is impacting you. What, what, how do you heal yourself if you don't know you need to be healed? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to recommend some books actually, because I feel like, again, self-awareness is key. And like you're saying, if you don't maybe have that in the beginning, that's okay. This is where you get to start to learn about yourself. And then when you kind of read through some of these things, you might be like, oh, okay. Now I see how that's popping up in life. So I always recommend the five personality patterns. It's by Steven Kessler. It's basically these energetic archetypes and how we operate in overwhelm. Great for entrepreneurs because we all experience overwhelm. And based on your energetic archetype, which is based on like childhood psychology, you're going to operate a certain way in business. We literally all have been zero to five years old at some point in our life. So we're all going to have some piece of the pattern, some piece of the pie that runs our business. So let me give like a very brief, like five things that you might notice. So notice if you dissociate when you have a lot going on and you kind of go out to outer space and that's kind of where you go when you feel overwhelmed. If you maybe merge with other people and you're like, okay, well, I got to see what my coach thinks. So I got to see what this person thinks. And you have a hard time making decisions without like needing to get approval or permission for somebody. That might be another pattern. If you're very self-reliant and you're like, oh, I just have to do everything myself. I don't need to ask for support. I got this. That's another one. Um, for some people, it's very much enduring, like go and hold and, and just endure, 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 endure. Like I'm fine. Everything's great. For some people, the kind of aggressive of like nothing bigger than me can hold me. I just have to fire and kind of will my way through. And then there's the rigid, which is very much like this, like mental structure. It has to make sense. I need to understand all the logical steps. Those are pieces of the five personality patterns on a very brief example. We all are running something of that. Read that book and see which one speaks to you the most. Now, the second one that I'll recommend too is the book Attached. And it's about how your attachment style impacts your relationships. So there's secure, there's anxious, there's avoidant, and then there's disorganized, which is like a mix of anxious and avoidant. 
we run those patterns in relationships. And we also then, if you want to add like your business as a relationship or money as a relationship. So if you're avoiding money, you're avoiding looking at your bank account or you're checking it every single day, like multiple times throughout the day and you're checking your DMs and you're doing all these things. Like these are all signs. Uh, And I'd say one other big one too that just popped up into my mind that I see probably with most people is there's the fear. Some people have the fear of success and can I actually keep and hold and will it sustain? Will I be able to keep doing this thing? Or they're um, afraid or they have the fear of disappointment. So I don't let myself go big. I don't let myself really step into everything that it's, that I want, because what if it fails? What if it doesn't work out? What if, what if, what if? So all of that, if anything of that resonated with you, those are all either little or big things. You might have it kind of more where it hits you harder than other things in in life. Those are all just little ways that trauma might be then impacting our business. Now, are these things, I mean, you have every certification under the sun, like, and you coach, you run your own coaching certification. Is this what you help entrepreneurs with, help coaches with, help people with? Like, how do you break down what you help people do in their own business and get trained to do? Yeah. So like on the coaching side of my business, within probably 20 minutes of talking to somebody, just kind of tracking their nervous system. When I ask some questions, I can usually tell like, okay, where is the trauma impacting your business? And everyone thinks it's very like woo woo and very spiritual, which I am a very spiritual, spiritual human. I'm just tracking people's system. Like I'm just watching your body cues while you're talking. And when you're sharing about something where you kind of go and how your system responds. So I see all of that and how it's impacting your business. So a lot of times people will come to me, they're wanting to make more money. They're wanting to, you know, increase their team. They're not wanting to be burnt out. So we're kind of looking at, okay, well, where's all that playing out? Then the second side of the business is training people who then experience all these different types of modalities have huge, amazing shifts and breakthroughs and transformation in their life. And they're saying, like, I want to bring this to my clients. It's been such a huge impact on my life. I want to help others do the same. Mm. And do you, what, what are some of the things that you do, right? Because there's so many different things that we could try, right? Mm-hmm. What are some of the things that you do that are non-negotiables in relation to your practice and in relation to the things that you coach others on? Yeah. So the um, example that I gave earlier about just checking in with my body, I do that pretty much every morning. Just take a moment to drop in. How am I feeling? What's kind of bubbling up and w- what's here? What's alive right now in this moment? So, and then if I have kind of, you know, some thoughts or some fears or whatever, I'm just presencing them and kind of working with what they need. Breath work, meditation, all of that is something that I do as much as I can, whether it's a longer practice. Sometimes it's not a long practice because I'm traveling and I got a lot going on, but it's five minutes. Like if you can commit five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever to yourself, it makes such a big difference because you're clearing out the energy that isn't Mm -hmm. serving you. So then again, you can move from a better space. So those are things that are non-negotiable for me and receiving a lot of support. So I, I do a lot of attachment work, energetic work. I receive a lot because I give a lot. So that helps my system also to just kind of maintain the balance of giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. Now, you've impacted me a lot in our friendship, and I know that everyone that we know together thinks the world of you, you're incredible at what you do. Is there anything that you want to share with with our people before we start to kind of wrap up here? Yeah, you know, I'd say lean into your body. Your body, your subconscious is 99% of how you operate. And inside of your subconscious are your values, are the programs that run your programs. It's your internal representation. So anytime, if you look externally and you're not where you want to be, whether that's in business and your financial situation and whatever, there's probably something internally that's happening and you don't have to beat yourself up. You don't have to go on like a digging exploration to figure out like, quote unquote, what's wrong with you. You just need to start to say, okay, well, where am I operating from and what's happening inside of me that then I'm projecting out. And then let me get curious about that. Like just start to get curious about everything that's happening in your life and every patterning that you're seeing And if you can bring that curiosity and that self-awareness to it, you'll notice a lot of big shifts that begin to happen. And and if, if you're listening, if someone's listening to this right now and they're like, okay, 
Like I, I know that there are things that I can, I can work through based on what Aaron's talking about. What, what's the best place to do that with you? Is that, do you have any events? Do you have programs? Do you, would you recommend to go straight into the certification? Like break down what somebody should do at this point to continue learning from you. Yeah. So I'd say definitely one of the best ways is the certification because we take you through your own internal healing journey. And of course we give you the tools and the training to go do that with others. Some people honestly go through it more for self than they do anything because you get to work through a lot of this in there. Uh, if you're looking for more of like an in-person experiential live sort of thing. We do have the energetics of business live in February, which I'm super excited for because it's going to be again, not, not as much like speakers information, which is all great, but like, let's actually go internal and let's see what's coming up for us and be in community and connection and work through that. So then you can move forward from a new energy. Yeah, those are both great opportunities. So you can go in person live event type environment, really get immersed and experience it or you can actually get certified in the different modalities, mm -hmm. whether you wanna just experience it for yourself or you wanna be able to use those modalities in your coaching, in your business, to help with your clients, to help them get the results. Would you, is that, do I have it right? Yeah, that was great. Okay, my final big question here for you is this, Aaron. You know, we talk about trauma, we talk about burnout, we talk about energetics of business. How would you say that doing all of this work has helped your business, your relationships, your overall enjoyment of life. How valuable has this work been and what has it led to? Mm, great question. You know, the first thing that comes to mind is like the highs of business. So, you know, the, the high income months, the great launches, the amazing opportunities, I can actually feel them and receive them. And I'm like, huh, like, okay, like it's safe for me to actually hold the good things. And when there's a low, you know, if there's a low income month, client issue pops up, I'm not running in this like, oh my gosh, everyone's going to hate me and I'm going to be canceled. And, you know, all of these things that would pop up for me before, it's like, I'm not operating through the, my business anymore through the lens of like a child that is either trying to earn love or trying to make everybody happy. And I'm operating truly as myself. And so I'm like, I'm not people pleasing. I'm being in my authentic self. And of course the success, the money, all of those things come when you are actually living who you who you're fully meant to be versus what you think that others want you to be. What a way to finish. Are you kidding <laughs> me? Come on now. All right. So how do we follow you? How do we learn more about you? How do we work with you? Tell us the links, tell us the places, tell us the social, give us the goods. Yes. Yeah, so I am Erin Nicole coaching pretty much everywhere you go. Uh, Jake would kick me if I didn't say that I have a book called burnout to breakthrough, which little side tangent here. You are so helpful for me in realizing that I don't use my book as uh, like anything ever. I'm like, oh yeah, I have this book and I did this thing. Almost kind of like what I was saying earlier of like crossing it off and continuing on. And you gave me so many ideas of how to integrate it with meetups and events and all of these things. So I have to give you a huge shout out for that because I'm ordering books all the time now. I'm just like, here you go. I have a book. Yeah. So thank you for that. So I have a book and then the Energetics of Business podcast is always a great place to hang out too. Cool. Well, there you have it, everybody. Erin Nicole Porter, Erin Nicole Coaching on all social media platforms. Make sure to go check her out. I know that it's a breath of fresh air to follow Erin and to see what she's going on. She's always doing some incredible things, always changing lives. And, um, you know, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know. All right. Hit us up. Tell us you enjoyed it. All right. This is why we do what we do. We have fun so that people that we can't see right now, but you're listening in your car at the gym, wherever you are in your bed. Like we want you to have a good time. We want you to, to take these conversations and use them to change your life. So if you enjoyed this, let us know. And other than that, I thank you, thank Aaron, you. for coming on. And I thank you, the listener, the watcher, the viewer, the person who is coming, coming to commit to change their life for your time, your energy, and your attention. That is a wrap for today, and I will see you all next time.